Hey people, what's going on? My name is Peter Lloyd. What's going on? This is the third time I'm trying to do this live. In one day I was on Facebook and it was just a nightmare. Couldn't get it done. Couldn't get it done on YouTube. But I'm a tenacious individual and I refuse. <laughs> yeah, because I think this is important and I want to I want to share this information with all you remarkable amazing people what's up Chris I see you my brother I see you all right so my name is Peter Lloyd and we are starting a series called entertainment truth news and you for those of you who do not know who I am uh, I've been in the entertainment industry for a while can tell you how long because in my mind I'm 22 <laughs> and um, started out as a film actor I have worked uh, as a lead and as a star in uh, films and TV series for Walt Disney, Fox, ABC. Um, I've worked with Denzel Washington, Spike Lee, um, Alec Baldwin, 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 Meg Ryan, um, out, out of Jamaica, Charles Hyatt, um, Leonie Forbes, Harvey, Faye Ellington. I can keep going on and on. I'm very, very, very blessed uh, as an artist. I've also had numerous number one songs uh, across the globe. I have toured most of the world with the exception of Asia. I do an annual US tour and, a, and every other year I do the United Kingdom and Europe. Um, I have had, I have headlined numerous major events across the globe, including here in Jamaica. And I am just very, very blessed. Uh, I modeled for a brief period of time, believe it or not. And I was the voice of um, Air Jamaica and the voice of um, the Jamaica Tourist Board for several years. I've done almost six, seven hundred radio commercials globally and locally. I've done a lot of work. I've been very, very blessed. So I want to, I want to be able to, to um, share some of what I know with all you people. I was trying to do it um, earlier on Facebook, but it's just too complex. Uh, and, and this is this is an easy stream to do it on. So anyone who knows any young artists out there in any part of the arts, whether they want to get into music, um, oh, Marianne, great to see you here. Susie, you are you are always here. Thank you so very very much for your support. Nadira X Chris Taylor. Um, hopefully we we'll get a few more people in the stream. So I'm really giving you, um, sharing with you my wisdom from the entertainment industry because here's the truth. Most of what people see in entertainment, they see the end product or they see the glitz and the glam. Uh, they hear rumors and um, I can tell you the truth about what's happening in the business, not just locally but globally because I've worked globally and not just as a singer, songwriter, record producer, promoter, actor, um, director, film director. I, I've done a lot of things, broadcaster, um, I hosted Man Talk. Um, man and woman story and morning time I have I've been very blessed so I want to be able to share this so if you know any young artists out there who want to be told the truth how this really works the inner workings please have them join us if not have them come back and check out the stream so uh, I was speaking earlier um, and this is the first in the series one of the things that no one talks about in entertainment is we talk about many, many things in entertainment, but they never tell you about this particular thing that's extremely important in the field of entertainment. And that's simply this. Years ago, uh, I had the opportunity of working with, with Mr. Denzel Washington. I think most people on the planet Earth know who Denzel Washington is. I was very blessed to work with this gentleman. And um, I asked him, I, I, in fact, I only, I, only did the C, I only did that film because it was a non-speaking role and I had never before or since done a non-speaking role. But um, as a Screen Actors Guild, a proud member of the Screen Actors Guild, uh, I reached out to my then manager and my manager said to me, Ian, what's going on? Big up yourself. Um, what's up? What's up? What's going on? Big up, Ian. Big up to the whole and Thanks for stopping by. So Denzel Washington gave me some advice. I said to him, you know, what is the key to success in any form of entertainment? And he told me something very straightforward. He said, Peter, nobody wants to work with an asshole. No one wants to work with someone who's so difficult that you just don't want to work around them. So whatever you do, be respectful to people. Be smart. Be diligent. Know the business that you're in. Learn the, learn the inner workings. Learn the business of the business that you're in. But always be respectful because you have no idea who is who. 
Um, I proved this to be true repeatedly in my career. The first film I got was just the kindness of someone. Someone saw a uh, talent in me and just gave me a, a chance. I, I mean, I don't want to get into it because we'll be here forever. Um, the first show promoter who booked me, same thing, um, was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Clinton Lindsay. Well, the first place I performed outside of Jamaica was Madison Square Gardens, people. Fully sold out. That this is because of the kindness of Mr. Clinton Lindsay. So what I was told was really important by Denzel Washington. He said, look, learn the business that you're in. Learn the business of the business. Understand that the arts, any part of the arts that you're in is actually a business. He said, be respectful to everyone. Treat everyone as an equal. Because you have no idea who is who and who will become who. And then he said, no one wants to work with an asshole. Now, a lot of times, younger acts, acts inbox me and ask me their advice, ask me my advice. Now, I'm no genius. So what I've done in this series, I've invited people who are overachievers. You know, people who have done immense things. So we have two persons working, work, waiting who are going to join us. Um, one young lady is Jamaican, uh, born in Kingston, Jamaica, St. Andrew, Jamaica, grew up in Linstead, Jamaica. And she has sung with the likes of Annie Lennox and the Eurythmics. She has toured with some of the biggest acts in the world. She has recorded and written music with the Rolling Stones. This is a Jamaican young lady. And I invited her to tell us what her experience was like initially as a signed artist. Because, you know, we hear this thing all the while. You know, recording artists get signed. And in Jamaica, we celebrate and say, yay! And it's... <laughs> People, a record deal is like a loan from the bank, here. Yeah? Literally, a record deal is like a loan from the bank. It's a record label saying, we're going to invest this money in you. And you better make back our money with a huge amount of profit. All right. Uh, so uh, right about now, people, I'm going to invite online um, Nadira X, one of Jamaica's most accomplished rappers, hip hop artists, sing, singer, songwriter. Um, big up, big up. i um, glad to all you who are stopping by. Means a lot. Thank you very, very much. It's the first in the series. And I think I'm just going to do the series from here until I can figure out this Facebook thing because it's crazy. So, um, put your hands together and let's invite on stage Nadira X. A whole lot easier here. Yeah? Should be, should be waiting on Nadira, waiting on Nadira. Um, so like I said, Nadira X, um, has worked at the lights of the Rolling Stones. You all must know who the Rolling Stones is. Um, she was signed to a deal. Hey, what's up? You see what I mean? Finally. This is so <laughs> like, listen, it's almost as if Facebook is designed to frustrate. This is insane. I was, right. I was already pressing every button on the screen. But why would it take so long? <laughs> I don't understand these companies at all. But anyway, you know. Oh, my God. I mean, this is their platform. <laughs> which somebody should say to them, you should put your Facebook plat platform just like how this is. Look at how easy this was. Uh, it was it's so insane. easy. Uh, it's so easy. And StreamYard oh. was bugging out. So, but we're, we're here. We're here. Yeah. Let's hang out. All right. So, people, this is the Nira X. Um, like I said, any young artist, if you know anywhere near you right now, um, any young singer, songwriter, rapper, producer who wants to get in the game, get into the business, reach out to them right now and tell them to come right here, right now. Um, this is information they're going to take. It's, it's, it's exclusive. They're not going to get this anywhere else. And we're going to be doing this in this, throughout the series. We're going to be running the series for the next two months. And I'm going to be inviting a lot of people. Because luckily for me, some of my friends are superstars. <laughs> they, you're don't, the superstar, they don't like Peter. it. They don't like it <laughs> But Peter, um, you're the superstar. I don't That's know what happened. <laughs> but, okay, Nadira. Um, first yes. of all, let me start out. Let me just say thank you very much for being and being so patient. We were trying this on StreamYard, <laughs> we tried this on YouTube, we tried this on Facebook. Man, may I tell you? Um, right. um we're man, to out now. We're here. We're here. Uh, yeah. you started out in 2002, 
you enter the competition. You can tell me if I'm correct. Um, yeah, I started out a little before that. Yeah, but, before but, that. <laughs> but, but I want to talk about the, the launch point before we get back into the, it. The launch the, point. The actual yeah. launch point for you was um, RFM and CME had a contest, right? Can I tell you, can uh-huh. I tell you that, that, that story real quick? I, I, I would know, love to know, hear that. Please tell us. You know, you know is Abijah and Tamina that thing there? I didn't know that at all. I didn't know that at all. I mean, he's going to I'm going to have him. I'm going to have him on one, one, one week. Yeah, um, man, that man, that man really supported me a lot. He was like, "This is a good idea. Enter me." And then we we'll just hear my song them on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Big up, I just big heard up, the big song. Up, yeah. Big up, Pat boys. Big up, big up, big up. Yeah, um, yeah. So go ahead, go ahead. No, take, I just so, wanted, to let, well, I wanted that to be clear. Mm-hmm. All right, so Abijah entered you into this contest that was a CME slash IRFM contest, right? Yes, um, in the Caribbean. Yeah, in the Caribbean. Um, and uh, what happened after that? This was in 2002. Walk us through it. 2000, 2002, yes. 2002. Um, yes. So, you're still uh, baby, you know, you're baby, you know, so 2002, trust me. I'm big, big man, big man, big man. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but you know, I think everything was so organic and by chance because mm. I was invited to perform the Wednesday. Um, uh, and so love Steven Ventura at the time he was my manager and he wanted my performance to be so different Mm -hmm. than just getting on a stage with the tracks. Right. And we, he put a band together and I had a female drummer, Ariana Wint, who was coming out of Edna. And I remember that girl. That was, that was just, that was different because you know, it wasn't much female drummers at the time in Jamaica mm. um, or, or scene. And Stephen was my DJ. Caffinal and Sambo were backing <laughs> vocals yeah. with Kamar. Yeah. I mean, Stephen put together this grand thing. Um, and I was so appreciative. And we rehearsed, we rehearsed. And so we performed on the Wednesday. And the Thursday morning, we woke up to the front page of the Gleaner, the Star, right. the Observer. Right. And it was like, whoa, this is incredible. And one of the producers of the show, I can't really remember his name right now, said, you have to do an encore on Friday on Shaggy's stage at um, the island, uh, Black, Chris Blackwell's island. Uh, what's right. the name of that island? I know, yeah. I know, I know, I know what you're talking. It's right in Ocherius. Um, it's yeah, it's, where you have Margaritaville to the back. Right. And, yeah. It's called Islands. And, yeah. yeah. And um, man, we were so excited because he said this, this was never even like thought of that you could have an artist do an encore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, let me get everything the Wednesday night, so my voice. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> we get so much my voice done. <laughs> Thursday, you know, it was, a, it was Thursday, it was more interviews. It was very exciting. They had a lot of record labels down there wanting to, you know, they were scouting. Arista, Sony, all these labels. Friday no, call. No, let, me, let me interview. Let me interrupt you very quickly. Um, yeah. uh, people hear about record labels and they don't know what a record label is. Before you continue the story, what is a record label? What exactly is a record label? But people hear this term because in Jamaica <laughs> we use this term, and it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of loose. You know, I mean, I mean, you, you, you hit it on the head. It's literally. It's it's a business. It's a it's a right. loan that they that these in the, these companies give you to go and create a product. They are investing. They give you a loan. You put together this actual product, and if it sell, you make back some money. And if it not sell, you crash like a normal business. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Getting, you know what I mean. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. all of these guys were there. The label, uh, usually in labels, you have artist development. You have this whole process, mm-hmm. um, which I was exposed to, fortunately. Right. But but labels know them. I look for it right away, right away. <laughs> this is a hit already. You you've already done the work. Then them right. then right. them hop on. You know. Right. So. So it was um, a different experience so yeah, then for you. So you were, it's a you different, were a different. It was a diff- Yeah. Well, a very very different time. I mean, uh, from meeting 
Homer Harris to Andy Livingston. No, 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 no. I don't give us that. All those people. No, but no, I'm the saying, the story. So, so all those people are are the lead up to the artist yeah. development that got right. me to where I was. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. um, to be able to perform, hold a mic, all of these things. Right. Some of those things come naturally, but there's awesome. also the other parts of it. Right. right. Um, so I I perform the Friday night, give it my all. You had all these artists in the in the bone to kill everybody, you know. And my show was always so different because I was at the time the only female rapper that was somewhat popular right. in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, but I get off stage, voice gone, and the first person that grabbed my arm was uh, Brian Jobson. Brian Jobson, the great Brian. <laughs> the great Brian Jobson. And I had met him before, and I was like, well, who this? And he said, um, Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics wants to talk to you right now. All right. And so of this course. Is, this is, <laughs> now, now, this is, again, um, because maybe some of our listeners are not aware of who the Eurythmics were. The Eurythmics in the 80s and uh, 90s were one of the top three, four bands on the planet of Earth. Um, gave yes. us some of the biggest songs in history. Sweet dreams yes. made of these. I mean, some massive, massive hits. So Dave, yes. Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics wanted to speak to you after you stepped off stage. I stepped off stage. I, ex I mean, I was exhausted. All the way exhausted. Kamar, right. Kefinal, Sambo, the band. We just were, we gave it all because that was the encore performance. Right. Mm -hmm. And we got off just fully exhausted but exhilarated to be able to have graced that stage because that was, you know, the whole Shaggy Big Yard campus right. performing. That mm -hmm. was their stage. Um, and also Abidjan performing right. at the time. Yeah, that huge tune, Revelation. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and the, and he, he spoke to me briefly. He, you know, Dave just kind of went, you're such a star. I'm going to take you to England. That was our first conversation. Me sweating, going, what? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And, and he said, uh, I'm flying out tomorrow, but I'm, I'm going to, well, let's meet. And, um, and we met the next day. And uh, Dave moves at a thousand miles an hour. If he believes in something, he's going for it immediately. Right. And it's not a very, he's, he's not a conventional label person because right. he's also an artist. And I met with him. He showed me what his plans were. Um, in terms of his label that he was starting. His label was, at the time, very revolutionary, and I think other labels didn't like that because right. he was 50-50 for the artist. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. 50-50. That, that was the contract. He was a big believer that the artist should get their percentage. Right. <laughs> around, the <laughs> around the same time. Around the same time that was happening uh, for you, uh, I was signed to a label in uh, Atlanta and we were, but right. it was an indie label and we were approached by a major, a major, which was, you know, Virgin. And they, they didn't offer us 50 50. <laughs> no, man. This was different. They, and this was my first us. actual record. I mean, this was my first deal ever. But that's remarkable. And, you because, know, because what uh, I but that was his. Yeah. They offered ahead. us, I think it was. Two dollars, two two cents on the dollar. No, so, no, no, no. I think it was two cents on the dollar. Not like that. Two cents on the dollar. So the yeah, them thing that did go on still. Right. So so I would have made <laughs> for, for every dollar I earned for the record label, I would have made three cents. Yeah, man. That's so but those so were the them, them thing that was standard. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a it was a, a revolutionary thought mm -hmm. that he put into play. Right. And he wanted to sign artists that he believed in. Right. You know? And I mean, I didn't know he was in the audience filming me while I performed. He showed me the film after. And, um, but however, about a week later, he says, I'm going to send you a track. Put a verse on it. And he sends a track. And it's Mudbone Cooper from P-Funk, Funkadelic. Whoa. And he's Whoa. like, Whoa. Uh, Bootsy, Bootsy Rubber Band. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and I was just like, listen to this voice. What the hell? He he was the co-writer on I Wanna Be With You. Yeah. I Wanna Be With You. Yeah. That huge song. And um and I put the verse on and I sent it. 
And a week later, my ticket was there. He was like coming to England. All right. Now, before we get into <laughs> the step by step, um, yeah. For for our listeners, name some of the people you worked with that they would know outside of the Eurythmics. Some of the people that impacted uh, you, that that you know, that blew you away, knowing that you were working with these people. Jimmy Cliff. Jimmy Cliff. Whoa. Writing, writing, and recording with Jimmy Cliff was one of my first things because. Uh, Dave was work, working with them. I, literally, when I got off the plane and they drove me to Dave's house, I get out of the car and Annie Lennox and Dave and uh, Jimmy Cliff are there, just hanging out, taking photos. That's my first thing off the plane. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, um, working with Jimmy, working with, man, Jesus, Peter, you put me on the spot. Uh, I also did some writing with Bono. Um, oh, this, is, this is Bono from U2. At I, the I time, did some the writing with Bono. On the planet of Earth. On the planet of Earth. Okay. This, uh, was a, okay. this was a, yeah, this, it was a whirlwind, Peter. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, well, I know, I know people that you were, and I know that you work with Pink. You know? well, well, that was a tour. That yeah, was a tour. We, we opened for Pink. That was the biggest, the biggest, because it was like stadiums and arenas kind yeah. of thing. So that yeah. was massive for us. Um, <laughs> Work, working on it. it, it, it yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Wow. <laughs> Going from just nads to, you know. But I also, I also, it's a very interesting journey, as I said, with David, it's a whirlwind. I mean, he called. He 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 flew me up one time. I mean, I'd moved to London, and he said, uh, "Look, we're doing this this movie soundtrack with uh, you know him and Mick Jagger, executive producing and producing." Yeah. And then he just and then they just gave Stop me the, the film. So I mean, no, I'm a, sorry, because you, you you have a way of just speaking things over, right? You just said Mick Jagger. Mick, Mick Jagger, Jagger of the Rolling Stones. Stones. Again, yeah. one of the biggest bands and artists on the planet. That's like saying Michael Jackson or, you know, <laughs> yeah. it literally is. It's literally like saying, it's like saying the Beatles or Michael Jackson or Bob Marley. It's like one of the top 10 acts on the planet. Go on. Yeah. Um, and then I get in the studio and they, Dave wants me to write my version of the Alfie soundtrack, of the Alfie song, which was sung by, oh my God, uh, Dionne Warwick. For the original Alfie movie, which was massive with Michael Caine, you know, yeah. and now they were remaking it with Jude Law. And uh, I met with the director and he gave me a screening, mm -hmm. watched it a little bit. It was like, you know, Nia Long, all these people watched it a little bit, wrote it. Well, didn't write it right away, had some ideas, got in the studio, and Paramount Pictures is filming the process. Right. And so I start writing, 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 writing. And Dave comes in and says, okay, well, Joss Stone is here. She's going to be singing. Wow. Joss the, Stone. The part. Wow. Joss Stone. So Joss comes into the studio and she's, you know, she's like 18 at the time, I think. And uh, she's like, well, what song is this? You know, it was very casual. We're in, we're at, first of all, we're recording at Abbey Road where the Beatles recorded. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so that's like a whole other element. And so I'm just in this massive room with, with these incredible people and Mick is there and Dave and the whole team and all these cameras. And while the cameras are rolling, Dave takes my notebook and he, and he, he hands it to Joss. And Joss is like, but she's, she's, she's got to remember the, the parts is that he's like, she's fine. <laughs> and I, I, I barely made it through that session because they're filming the video. I was like, well, God, remember the lyrics, remember the lyrics. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, I worked with I worked with quite a lot of people. Very impressive. Did I was one of the only artists on Annie Lennox's Weapons of Mass Destruction album. I remember that. Album. Um, I have that. And album. I, yeah, I mean, Songs of Mass Destruction. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. um, yeah, man, written on tracks with several things that haven't even been released. You know. Now here's the thing. Um, in my experience doing film, um, I worked with. 
people who were superstars and who became superstars. Um, Denzel was already a superstar. I worked with um, Jamie Foxx. I, I worked with a lot of these people. And what I found is that they were the nicest and most normal people. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, they, they were, my experience, I mean, when I, when I came back to Jamaica and started doing, doing the business here, I was, I think people got the wrong impression because I was really young, because I was not, look, if, if you work with people like that, ain't nobody in Jamaica is going to blow you away, unless it's Bob. You get what I'm trying to say to you? But what I realized, yeah. they were genuinely very nice, very ordinary yeah. people. Was that your experience? Yeah. With, um, with that people? was my, ex absolutely my experience. Um, very, well, well the, the thing is, is like people, when you enter a room with these people, you, you're either going to be super, like you've built up this expectation, mm. or you kind of just enter very be yourself into very calmly. Dave is always like, you always seem so unimpressed. <laughs> but it isn't, it's just my coping mechanism that I, I'm here to accomplish this thing. This is an amazing opportunity. And so I, I center myself before I enter any of those rooms. And, but once I've entered, it's a diff, because now creativity is happening and everybody's equal in that space. And there's respect in that space. And a lot of these superstars understand that process. That when you enter, when you enter that room and you're creating, then mm -hmm. if everything else goes out the window. If you start having egos in that room, then the creative process is going to be is the, the the entering and going. Well, you know who me is kind of yeah. vibe. No, because because no. I, well, I guess what you're saying is everyone is really at the same level at that point. Yeah, you're. At, because you're creating now it's right. very raw it's very basic everything is organic you're starting from scratch and like i said that was the environment that that dave had yeah that's the environment he still has it's very a uh, creative space it's all about the artist and i mean and 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 that put me in the room with one of the producers of my first album glenn ballard who wrote man in the mirror with my, for Michael Jackson and uh, oh. Saida Garrett, both Saida Garrett and him mm -hmm. wrote. Right. And he did the whole Jagged Little Pill album. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much put Alanis Morissette on the map. When I enter a room with him, and, and I've been blessed to do that several times and still working, is all of that does go out and we're just sitting by the piano. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we're just, and he'll go, I have this idea and we're bouncing it and we're bouncing it. And and you ha and you're humbled in that moment. How did you, know? you um, how did you manage? Because I've I've known we've known each other for a while. I mean, at least six months. Because you know, I'm twenty and you're you're eighty. And, yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, but I'm twenty two and you're eighty. And uh, <laughs> I keep I keep pushing that line, people. Hopefully one day it becomes true. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, um, it's in reverse. <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I understand the temptation of the industry, having been at many aspects of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I know that sometimes because artists are insecure and people don't understand this, it's really their insecurity. They yeah. become inflated. You know, they're terrified, yeah. so they attack. Um, yeah. you know, what I said about um, Denzel and all these other guys, the truth is all the artists I've worked with here in, in the, within the industry locally, most of them are actually really good. You know, once you get yeah. them away from the entourage and they only just sit on a whole, whole reason. Yeah. Um, but you were, there's a difference between hanging out with a local celebrity, but you were in the room with people who have redefined entertainment as we know it. The Rolling Stones redefined, uh, Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart redefined the industry. Um, some of the greatest songwriter producers. I have never, ever seen anything akin to an ego from ever. I mean, I've never seen anything in their personality because um, there are people in the stream who are saying, how can, how can we, how, I know, we know the song, we never know how she do it, how, how she's so humble. And how have you remained grounded? Because 
I want people to understand that she is still working with people. She's still doing this stuff. How have you managed to maintain a sense of self and equilibrium in all of this? Foundation. What would you advise, what would you advise an artist who's just breaking, you know, like, like, like you were? What would It's you foundation. Think? It's my foundation, I think, first and foremost. I think my parents mm -hmm. have a lot to do with it. And how I entered into this business, um, and I still don't like to call it a business because it's my passion. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I don't know. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very laid back person, Peter. I think the only time I really got super excited was when you called my house. <laughs> and I was like the young artist. And, and they say, yeah, my Peter Lloyd will meet you. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do get excited. I do get excited to work with all these incredible people. But I don't know. I just, I guess it's the wiring. I guess it's, um, I don't really have any great desire to show out and show off. The only time I feel inflated is when I'm on stage and the audience love it. Yeah. And you know, your ego kick in there. Yeah, you know, you have it halfway through the show, you say, yeah, yeah man, yeah. that thing you like, you know. Yeah. People <laughs> them depend on their feet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but once I get off, I'm back to being nuts. I'm just nuts. Mm -hmm. And I like, and, I, and I'm, and I like to hold on to that because that's the part of me that taps me on the shoulder. It just nods enough. Like a now, barefoot girl on a lens did. A lot of artists, uh, we, in the age of the, of, of um, the internet and social media, um, people are able to make pronouncements about themselves that are not really true. So people can call themselves superstars or stars or international artists or stuff. And I understand because um, I think the, we're in an age now, now where the hype goes before the talent, almost. It's almost as if the hype, and, I, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I have no problems with anybody who does this. I don't care uh, about that. That's fine with me. Um, but the pronouncement of, um, you know, greatness, uh, do you think it can hurt an artist or, or, or talent if they are so, I mean, it's imperative for them to believe that they are great. But if you have to believe in yourself. Yeah. Because we all have egos, you know. We all, we all have egos, but the, the key right. is to, as you said, not inflate that. Because yeah. you have to have an ego to say, I can write mm -hmm. this. Yeah. I can sit in the room with these people and I can write this. And they're going to like it. They're going to mm -hmm. love it. And I can deliver this. We all have that ego in any career. Um, it's hard, though, you know, when a lot of people start getting the admiration. Yeah. That's the, that's the dangerous part. And a lot, and a lot of the times in, in now, the admiration, as you said, the admiration is coming based on hype. Mm -hmm. And when that starts to fizzle, there's nothing, then, then that's when the crash and burn happens. If, Look, as the artist, you're not able to deliver on the hype, right, 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 um, mm -hmm. that's when it crashes. On, that's when it crashes for the for the person, you know, mm -hmm. because that's when they become sad and depressed, and you know, because it was all about being in front of the screen. You know what but, I mean? But but I, do, I mean, don't you think? I mean, understanding that if you you are, I would say. When, when you say female hip-hop Jamaican artists, it's really you and, um, uh, what's your name from Salt and Pep? You are the bo both... Pep. Right, Pep. The, you are, you are the, the two most successful female hip-hop artists, rappers we have produced. I mean, we know about Biggie Smalls and we know about Busta. Um, and uh, you, you got, you, when you broke, I mean, you, when, when, you, when you became huge as an artist, um, what was your experience like? Okay, better say. When you became a major player, which you still remain, how did that impact your craft itself? We're not talking about the ego now, the craft. Did it improve your craft? 
Were you, Absolutely. When, when you found yourself in a room writing a song with, with Jimmy Cliff, did you have to just, you, you said, boy, I may have to step up a Jimmy Cliff, may I write a song? I may I write a song with No, you? I, I, you know what? You know what it is, Peter? No matter who I'm writing with, I'm giving them 100%. Yeah. So I enter each session. I've worked with Chris Taylor. I'll give him 100%. The same energy I would give writing something for Annie. Uh, the same energy I would give writing, like I said, would it's the same energy across the board. I don't slack off just because it's somebody that is not famous. When I was coming up, people gave me opportunities. Right. You know true. what I mean? Um, so anybody at all, if, if I move to write, because I have to be moved, I don't just jump on rhythm um, and say, all right, I'm going to just go get on it because it's hot. I have to be moved and inspired, and that's how I've always worked. But I'm going to give it 100%. I'm not going to slack off because it's not you know, some famous person in the room. If I feel yeah. like we can create something beautiful, Listen, then I'm going to write it at 100%. We need to do this again on my YouTube channel so we can really talk. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah. it, because Instagram is, 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 is supposed to be like a restrict, like I think a time restricted. But listen, um, I had an experience and I just wanted to throw it out there to you um, years yeah. ago. Uh, I, I was at a place named Pasa Pasa in downtown Kingston. This is in the early 2000s. And there was a young artist who had, him, he had just gotten a huge hit, huge song that was playing everywhere. And um, Licker Richie, um, who was the top sound man out of Pasa Pasa at the time, still a veteran, um, said, hold on. I just put her the chair. I just put her the chair, man. I don't know. I don't know. Hold on a bit. I don't know my state, I'm a real, so, you know, you know, hope you tell me I'll go, get up. So, um, Licky Richie brought him over, and it was me, uh, and two other artists, I'm not going to call the artists. And, the, 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 you know, the, he introduced that, that particular artist to one of the artists, female artists, and then said, big up. And the artist, big up, and then he got to me, and Licky Richie said, this is, Peter Lyon, first to say. Yo, I'm going to talk to nobody unless I'm a superstar, right? So. That's terrible. That's absolutely <laughs> trash. So I'm a smile. That's a trash. <laughs> no, we're not. So I'm a smile. Because, I mean, people always wonder why those things don't impact me. But I've told you the story about the scorpion and the frog. You are what you are. Yeah. And yeah. I can't be vexed with you for being what you are. Six months later, that artist was calling me and begging me to record so Because no one, he was poisoned. And I remember I said to him, I said, listen to me. That don't work. Because in life, you don't know who is who. You, 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 you everybody, I, I, I am of the opinion, this is how I was brought up. Um, I think the man we are sweet, the, uh, the, 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 and the prime minister, I see him smiling. And it's what he was about you. And, and that was one of the things I admired about Dave. Mm. It's, it was always very respectful. You know, it doesn't matter who it was. Do you think this limits... Yeah, I watch that. When an artist behaves like that, do you think it, it hampers their past, their growth, their, their, their growth, their international... It would, because, because you're taking that ego into a... Into a a space that does not need that. You have to humble yourself. I think I think it does. I think it does. And I think it would impact you. Your creativity. If all you're thinking about in that moment is who you want to rub shoulders with. And you know, that shouldn't be a focus. Does this sound good? Can I make this a part of my process? Can I contribute something to this particular song? Mm. That is your approach. That should be your approach entering any space is to just be humble. That's what I that's what I would suggest. It's just enter the space in a creative vibe. You can't bring all that stuff in. That weighs you down. That keeps your lyrical content in one place. Because all you want to talk about is all your hype. You're unable to move from that place. If you just shed all of that, you'll be writing whatever. Why it's amazing, you know what I mean? it's amazing how um 
because we you and I have spoken have you ever had any truly negative um experiences in the industry like truly negative you know like I've, I've heard truly horror stories, negative right? I've, no. I've heard horror stories from other female artists tell you what you know being pre being pressured um into you know what I'm talking about I don't I, I don't want to say it I uh, I, yeah. I understand that but I yeah. think wow I was super and still am super blessed to be surrounded like by men like yourself, mm -hmm. like Andy Livingston, like Dave, like Homer Harris, all these people who are Steven Ventura, all these people who I ended up around. I was just like a sis. And they took care of me. And I think it really is difficult. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't know how to wrap my head around the horrors of that. I remember being in meetings with Dave, with Label, and the the thing is, they wanted me to be more sexy, you know. Yeah, man. And I would I would leave the room, and Dave would leave behind me. <laughs> That's that. And he would say, "You don't get it." <laughs> yeah. Straight. You you guys just don't get it. Talking about big record, big deals, you know, yeah. that could have been had. Mm -hmm. But I never. But I was in a position, and I and Dave afforded me the position to say no. To, to say no. And a lot of the times, our sisters aren't afforded that position. That's why I keep saying I've been very blessed to be surrounded by people who did not want to take advantage of me, and who actually respected what I did as an artist and what I do as an artist. And I never compromised that. Look, sis. Can we do this a little later today on, on YouTube? <laughs> hey, you know, that's you can't work it out. Because I, I, I know, I know you it. wanted to get this up. Yeah, yeah because, because what, what I want to do is, um, you know, it, I'm very blessed uh, to have friends like yourself. And, um, As we are blessed to have you. You know, I, I, humbly. But I, I want to... I have a lot of information up here and I think you do and a lot of us do and very often um, younger artists say you, you know the, the, the more mature artists are not sharing their wisdom or knowledge or whatever and I'm, I'm what I want to do what we're trying to do in this platform is is take people behind the process because uh, and, and with persons like yourself you are truly an overachiever as an artist that many well, I don't know, know but don't know. I don't forget what I'm trying to say to you. Um, they uh, know you. They know your music. They know you. But uh, and, and again, and, and this is the one more thing I wanted to get in before I invite Chris on. Um, what is success as an artist? You 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 have appeared on massive soundtracks. You've you've recorded with top artists. You or right before these people. She was sharing something with me because she didn't remember how many number ones and number two songs she has had across the world. She literally didn't remember, uh, which was so funny because that's that's what most what? artists live by. So, so for you, I mean, for me, I can say this: um, success for me is my health, my family's health, my daughter, my, my children's health, and they're okay, we're good. Linda um, Kamoma, we can run to joke. We can call you, because you know, sometimes you talk to you two hours, yes, two hours, <laughs> two hours. <laughs> um, and I can call to my sister and them. I mean, as yeah. I have heard, um, success for me then is a very different thing. I just want to be able to, to feed my family uh -huh. and, yeah. and, share, mean, and share my craft with people and make people feel better and have people learn that, from their experience. What that is, is the key. From the deal that is the key. What is success for Nadira? Success for Nadira X reflects much of what you said. It's family. It's it's family, and but the biggest part for me is to be able to execute what is happening here to a track. Once I can get that here and what's in here onto a track, <sighs> yeah. I've executed what I needed to do. Because it's it it's it's just being in that realm. Success for a lot of people reflects different things. Yeah. Me, I just want my kid to be happy. I want to be happy. 
I have a lot of I have a lot of fun because I'm a, I'm I'm into just laughing a lot. Yeah. Tell us, and, tell, um, us about, tell us about your coffee addiction. Boy, Peter, yeah, blast me so virgin. But my oat milk and my oat milk and brown sugar, my oat milk and brown sugar addiction. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Starbucks that take the whole of my money. <laughs> <laughs> me out for broke, you know. I try buy this thing I every morning jump up. Uh, yesterday, me said, me, yesterday my daughter buy me a cup. I said, honey, me I go broke I buy this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sponsor me a cup of coffee. <laughs> Boy, people, let me tell you something. You're not kidding. <laughs> Nadira is the only artist I know who's a morning person. No artist. I'm a full on morning person. I know. I got to bed at two, I'm up at five. But I love to greet this I earth. I, got, I, got, I go outside barefoot and touch earth, man. Just. I'm great, yo. You have I, to. I'm such a. I'm such a morning person. I, I. I don't even care what was happening the night before. This when I get up, I, up. I'm up. I it's can go crazy. write some music. This is, you, it's crazy. You. You're not a morning person. No. <laughs> Listen. Chris, I start to. Chris. I start to what get Chris up there? Chris is a. Chris, Chris knows I'm a hit Chris and I'm a hit Chris in the morning. And I have few coffee and I have my coffee. No, the toy you are crazy. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I started to wake up early when Nyla was born. And I'm saying, so I had to get oh, in. I didn't tour for three months, three years because of Nyla. I said I had to spend as much time with my daughter as possible, right? My daughter as possible. Um, and because I tore out the whole of that. I didn't. I, I couldn't. I, I tore the whole leave. of that. Well, let, I was listen. dragging my kid all over the place. Let, 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 let me get into this really quickly because I want, you know, Chris, Chris, don't move, don't move, Chris. But this is, I know people are enjoying this and they're learning so much. Um, the touring experience, right? The touring experience, because people don't understand um, that process. Uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't tour until Nyla was about five or six because we just couldn't leave her. I was good. Good. It's tough. It's tough to leave your kid. I, I couldn't it's tough leave. to leave your kid. Yeah, and and um. And and uh, Alice would tell you, my my my, her, my team from then would tell you when I went on tour. I, I, you know, we we'll gonna have your experience too. Within the first three weeks, I was fine. I was like this, yo, we on tour, yeah. And then like <laughs> by week four, I'm like, I want go on my beyond. I want some fried dumpling. I want some, want some, want some right planting. Me no want more that food, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you an experience I had. <coughs> working, 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 working. Jimmy Cliff was on tour with us. So it was Candy Dolfer who mm -hmm. played sax for Prince. Right, right, right. For tour. Oh, cool. I didn't know that yet. You had worked with her. I love her. Yeah, yeah man, we, we, we toured and stuff. So she says, so, you know, I'm there. And you're excited because it's Europe you're touring and mm -hmm. you're in all these grand places and you're with you know, Dave Stewart, and of course, it's sold out Nice Jazz Festival, Montreux Jazz, it's like big venues. So you hype up for the first week, your heart will palpitate every night, you're excited, right? Man, I one, maybe like, I'd say two months in, Jimmy Cliff called me to him room. He said, sis, tell Dave, send your home there for two weeks. You can see for him. <laughs> you need to take that break. Yeah? <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you know what I miss a moment? Jimmy say, go home. <laughs> Listen, people don't overstand it. When I was go home. Here, regularly. You know, I go home and re re rejuvenate, come back, you're ready again. Yeah, but... Take right, your break, go on. I, I couldn't do that because unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but unfortunately, I am the I am the lead for the tour. So I can't take a break. And I'm telling you, oh no. When we do those Europe tours and people don't understand, like we would do four months, three months. And by the time you just want to go warm, and then now you know Europe, their summer is not really a summer. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, no, it, that it, was the thing that was becoming cool. And by that time, I had moved there. So, like, oh it's God. just gray. It's, like, gray for six months. Man. There is snow. There is rain. And, I, and, I, and he saw it on me. Jimmy saw it on me. Like, that, that's the beauty of oh. having 
a veteran around here. A, vet, a veteran. A vet, I'm sure like everybody has saw it, but here's this process. And so there was a break coming up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so go home. <laughs> Most beautiful thing you could have told me. Yeah, man. Donald Lynn stood I eat fish and also at a something. And I drink coconut water. What so it, that's the beautiful thing. Did you have you ever had an issue, especially in your early career, of stepping out of that touring environment with, with surrounded by superstars, becoming a superstar yourself, and then you come right back at your yard? No, 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 superstar. Man. Nadira, Nadira, go wash your plate them. Did you have a problem adjusting? <laughs> did you ever have that problem? No, no, <laughs> man, I have a problem adjust to that. That's yeah. That's Regular. life, man. Wash, cook, clean. Take care of yourself. I, I don't have no... Yeah. The minute, the minute me land back home, me gone up on Andy's studio. I just yeah. want to go hang out. <laughs> it was never a thing of, oh my God, I'm back. I need to go. Mm. No. Wow. I, was, I just want to say, I just want to see my people. I want to be with my people. I miss them more than anything else. So that would be the thing. Yeah, man. Andy would tell if Milana, Jamaica, the first person we call, Italy. Andy, <laughs> what, what we are doing? Hang out. Uh, people, you know. for those who are just coming in, you're watching Entertainment Truth News and You, uh, where we tell the truth about entertainment. Uh, I'm your host, Peter Lyon, um, actor, singer, songwriter, broadcaster. We can keep going and going. And we have well, in front of us um, one of the most uh, successful rappers hip-hop artist in the history of Jamaican music. Her name is Nadira X. Go Copper. She has new music out right now. Just dropped. Um, amazing songwriter, artist who has worked with the best of the best. And they will tell you working with her that they worked with the best of the best. Um, well, uh, one, last, one last question. <laughs> <laughs> one last question. One last question. We're going to do this later. We're going to do this at 6 p.m. Everybody, we're doing this at 6 p.m. on YouTube. I do it properly. I'll try to figure out how to do that place. Um, final question. Yeah. Uh, now, this is a question that people, like every interview I've ever done, they ask me this, and I can't stand the question, but the truth is it's a necessary question, which is, what advice <laughs> would you give what advice? You went into your radio voice, Peter. Yes. What, what advice? advice? Um, a, a young upcoming artist uh, about getting into the industry and remaining true to their craft. And finally, is it important to be nice in the business and to be managed? Because, because what, what I realized in my business, yes, sir, is that um, it's like, some 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 of my brothers and sisters they're not no brothers. And I, I never understood the logic of that. Because like I said, yeah. all of you I use a bathroom and the truth is, <laughs> you know you know the, the you know the business. Human beings. The business is like this. This is the business. Yeah. Up and down. Yeah. Um yeah. what advice would you give to young acts, especially in a time where hype supersedes substance? <clears throat> I think the best thing. No problem with hype. Hype is no hype. Hype necessary. Um, Me not really big on hype. Me like just you know. We know. Cuss out all the time. You know, post nothing on Instagram one week, Mister General. We mega post the 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 coffee. We don't know if we post. (laughs) I think though. um, (laughs) Yes, work on your craft. Artist development, I keep going back to that, is so necessary. You can't just, especially the the, the individuals who are managing these young artists, they're just they're just throwing them to the wolves right now. And if they don't make it, them go and left them in. Find somebody. First thing you do is you you find a team of people who believe in you, your talent, not what you're going to look like on Instagram, not how much follower you have, not how much likes you get at this particular point, to stay true and stay grounded to the craft. Yeah? Work on that. And work and work on your work and work on your work ethic. Right. You mm-hmm. can't you can't you can't get called for a session and then you you, you know you show up hours late and 
in disarray. I think I think you treat it like this is your job, mm-hmm. but you treat it like I'm so honored to be able to create for my job. Yeah. And respect it. Respect your craft. Don't just treat it willy nilly and you know, keep working on it. Keep keep reading. Yeah, keep reading, keep getting to understand, you know, everything about whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is, whether you're painting, just writing, whatever it is, and respect your environment. When you step into a, a, whether it is Olympia Studio in London, or just a little little man home studio, you have decided to go there. You have decided to step in that room. Be respectful. It don't matter if it's a zinc top the man out. When you walk in there and put on a beat, if you don't like it, you don't have to, you don't have to be disrespectful about yeah. it. Because you, you're the one who entered that person's space. That's their space. So yes. that comes back to being nice. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But don't, I agree. But don't, be, ni- but don't be nice where it, where, it, where it becomes a disrespect to you. Yes. And to yeah. your, and to your be, craft. Be, and to your business. And to your craft. And to your yeah, craft. Absolutely. I mean, being being nice is it, it is very important to be respectful, and I guess I have manners. Mm. People will take advantage of that as well, especially as women. So you have to carry yourself a certain way. Doesn't you don't have to be rude, you don't have to be loud, but you have to have a certain sense. You have to have a poise where they're not even going to step to you with that. They won't even talk to you carelessly. Listen, you know I what think- I mean. I shake in my head because I wish we had another five hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that we can have you back um, on this. We're gonna, we're gonna make this work. You know me, I'm like a pit bull. If I decide I'm gonna do something, it's gonna get done, and I think this is necessary. Uh, next yeah, week we're gonna have uh, another amazing guest. Um, right now we're gonna, I'm gonna see how we're gonna do this. Now I want to bring up Nadira. Love you. You know me, love you. Love you. Yeah. Yeah, the boss and the best. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Um, love people you. don't go. We have all right now. I'm trying to understand how to do with this. I think I I think I get off and then you okay, can yeah. add and then you can add Chris. Let me try right, and get yeah. off. Okay. All right. Thank you so very much. All right, people. So um that was Nadira X. Nadira X is uh one of the most successful Jamaican rappers in history. And um one of the humblest human beings I know. Uh, if you are listening, you'd understand this person has worked with the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. Um, uh, and we're going to be doing this um, later on on my YouTube channel, which is Peter Lloyd World. Check us out. Um, because we supposed to be, we were having some technical difficulties, but we'll be dealt with. Uh, now, right now, um, next week, Friday, uh, we have the fourth installment of the Royals in Concert, the best free music online concert monthly series on the planet of Earth. Me, says so this is a fact. And uh, it's growing from strength to strength. I'm inviting you all there. Amazing artists. We tend to have different genres um, next month. This, this month, we have uh, an amazing reggae songstress. And then we have a rock pop star by the name of Mr. Chris Taylor. And right now, I'm going to invite Mr. Taylor to come on up. Um, Chris is just, just a remarkable person, talent, multifaceted. And um, thank you guys for being here with us. Chris. Hello. Big up, my brother. Big How up. are you? Um, you know, Chris. We, you know, you know, we're gonna have to do do a full session with you, like we just did with Nadira. Oh, I love um, Nadira so much. That was great. Yeah. Just listening in, I love that. Now, Chris, um, next week you're going to be performing on the Royals in concert. Um, we are excited to have you. You are our first. Uh, well, no, you are our first rocker who's going to be performing <laughs> on the Royals in concert, and we are like stoked. We are like whoa. Um, people, I, uh, Nadira X introduced me to Mr. Taylor, Mr. Chris Taylor, and I fell in love with his craft, his music, his art, his persona, his humility, because he's right there. He's probably going to turn pink in a few minutes knowing Chris. Yeah, he I hates can see this. it coming on. He hates this. Yeah. Um, but a truly talented person, and um, we are very excited to to have him perform on the Royals in concert as 
as one of our two headliners, uh, which happens um, next week, Friday, uh, the 30th of April at 8 p.m. Jamaica time, 9 p.m. Eastern, and I think 6 p.m. West Coast. So you guys have to make sure you are there. It's going to be remarkable. It's going to be on the Peter Lloyd World or Blacklight Records um, YouTube channel. You cannot miss this. Um, it's every every month we have two amazing artists. Chris, um, how? No, not how. <laughs> why music? Why art? Why pain? Why? Um. You know, it's ever since I was a kid, ever since I can remember. Uh, I was born in a little town in upstate New York. And in that little town, I lived kind of right on the edge of Lake Ontario. Cool. And Lake Ontario would have uh, the shore of Lake Ontario is a bunch of rocks. And I would spend hours by myself picking up rocks and skipping them into the lake and dreaming up my future. And I was born in 69, so in the mid 70s and, and early 80s, uh, my sister, my older sister, uh, she managed one of the two movie theaters in that town. And one of those movie theaters was built like in the, I wanna say in the 40s, and it had an upstairs and a downstairs theater. And the downstairs theater had like a little stage for like a little Broadway play or a little, little live, you know, theater thing. And it had the plush curtains and it had the stage lights, the blue, red, blue and white stage lights. come. And so the cool thing about it was, is when no one else was there, my, you know, my sister would open the theater and the smell of popcorn in the air. Right. And I would... <laughs> I would say, can you turn on the stage lights? And I would walk up on the stage as if I were about to perform something, even though I had nothing to perform. And I dreamt it all up in my head. I, I, I could see, you know, in front of me were a, a couple hundred empty seats and I had the lights in my eyes and the curtain to my back. And it was like, it just felt like this is, that's where Way I should be. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I was always drawing and and writing um i would write uh i don't want to call them lyrics to me it was just like you know it was like oh baby oh girl why don't you want me oh girl you know <laughs> i never even had any girlfriends at that stage it was just it was just my little inner thoughts you know and uh so that's how it all kind of came to be and i just kept on doing artistic, like visually artistic things, as well as um, using that same sort of artistic expression in my music. It, was, it wasn't even really about becoming successful or famous or wanting, I mean, there was a little bit of that because you want, you want to kind of climb a ladder and feel like you're getting somewhere. But it wasn't as much about that as it was like, I had such a passion for just trying to take, almost like what Nadira said, like trying to take what is in here and putting it onto a tape, um, you know, back in the early days, it was like a four track recorder, you know, and now it's like, you know, you, you can, you, you have an unlimited possibility on your computer to, to do just about anything you want. But that's all it was about it was artistic expressions in every way. And somehow I've just sort of navigated my own little life doing exactly what I want to do all along the way. So it's, it's pretty uh, rewarding, to say the least. Now, now there's, um, you know, it's it it's re it's always remarkable. It's always remarkable um, when I when I listen to you speak, um, when I see your 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 paintings, and when I hear your music, um, I I see every the, the soul of everything stitched together in one canvas. It's 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 a remarkable thing to see a songwriter, singer express himself on a canvas. I, I, I don't remember ever seeing that before. Um, and and uh, what's remarkable to me is that I am as impressed with your art as I'm impressed with your art. You oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's a remarkable thing. Um, 
next week uh we, we're gonna we're gonna have to come back and do this the, the way i want to do it sure um what do you have in store for um persons who, who want to come by and watch you perform on the royals in concert what <clears throat> why should they come and see the great chris taylor i mean i, I, I think <laughs> that's awesome more because I, I i know you are the great chris taylor but for well, those two who don't know you why what do you have in store for them? you know well, just, uh, i'll just say this i think people should come uh to the to the Royals in concert because you are bringing together a diverse community of people from all around. And that in and of itself, um, you know, month to month is a reason to tune into this. Uh, but specifically, as far as I'm concerned, you know, uh, it's the performance next week will be myself and a guitar and it'll be um, very organic and uh, you're gonna get a glimpse of what I do uh, musically and and with my visual art as well. And so you're gonna get a really good combination of that. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. And if you just wanna see a performance, it's not about hype, kind of like what you and Nadira were talking about, it has nothing to do with hype, has nothing to do with about uh, trying to achieve a kind of success. It's just about, I took, you know, I'm gonna take a few of my songs um, and these are some of my most personal songs Your personal favorites and um and i'm going to share them with you in all of their uh in all of their intensity as much as one guy and his guitar can do it and uh and I, to me that's like uh, it all starts there because it's that's the way it sounds when i write it and then i'll bring in a band on um, for some time you know some occasions I'll, I'll be playing with a band but this particular time it's going to be my canvases my acoustic guitar, my voice. And um, I think you'll get a, hopefully, um, you know, why any songwriter writes songs is because they feel like there's something like it's gonna burst inside of them if they don't put it out <laughs> into the world. Yeah. And so hopefully there's a reason for these songs to be written. And, and, not only is it a joy for me to write and sing them, but I'm hoping that that, will, uh, that joy will translate through a, a phone or a computer screen or a television screen and, and come out the other end and, and have an impact on other people too. So that's, you know, that's as, as concise as I can possibly say it. <laughs> well, I mean, people, um, I've, seen, I've, I've seen Chris um, perform and, um, you know, like I said, I'm a huge fan. Uh, one of the things that I am fortunate uh, regarding uh, the Royals in concert is I'm able I'm I'm able to bring together this this remarkable community of people who are so talented, it is almost frightening, um, you know. And and uh, I can say unequivocally, uh, the, the people out there who, who know me know that I I do not BS unless it involves Jamaican bulla and um, Jamaican beer. Yeah, my love Bula. <laughs> so, so um, uh, he's 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 gonna be remarkable. And um, uh, summer summer is actually performing right now in Spain as we speak. She's on stage ripping it. So um, she she couldn't be here with us. But uh, we're gonna be doing this later, and we're probably gonna be doing this again tomorrow uh, on YouTube. It's it's gonna be dope. Um, Chris, I have to have you back to really have an in depth. Um, you know, interview with you because I think it's really important. Um, one of the reasons why uh, we came up with the Rising Concert is that we, we say the Rising Concert uniting the world through global music. And um, to have a young lady who just won the award in Spain for best reggae artist, along with a rock star on one platform performing is just unbelievable. You know, um, we have had uh, a roots reggae artist with a, a, a R&B singer. We have had Nadira X, um, an amazing hip hop artist. So, the, so um, we are humbled, we are elated and excited to see the great Chris Taylor perform. <laughs> and, um, you know, well, I you know, know, I know you hate this. I, I know you I, hate uh, it, yeah, people. Yeah. I will but it's just the truth. It's I'm, the truth. I'm, you have to understand, like coming from coming from San Antonio, Texas, is not necessarily the bastion of uh, creative 
um, <laughs> I get it, right? diversity, I you know, know. Uh, and it's, it's been really hard, you know, with the pandemic looming over all of us and, um, and with just the state of the music uh, scene in, locally and regionally in Texas, it's really hard to even get a gig. So, so just personally speaking, so it's, it's r such a blessing to be able to be a part of what you're doing. And I just think it's so, it's in a way it's, it's hilarious that I can connect with people globally yeah. much easier than I can get a gig, you know, <laughs> four blocks away. I just think that that's hilarious. So I'm honored to be a part of it. I, I only hope that this Royals in concert just grows no matter who's playing because you're bringing, it's like, we're all trusting you that you're bringing these amazing souls together to kind of create. I love the fact that uh, between myself and Summer, that we couldn't be any more different stylistically, yeah, yes, culturally, yeah. everything, and that we're going to just share some time together. And um, yeah, it couldn't be any, I, I couldn't be any happier to be a part of it. Well, I mean, like I said, hold on there, uh, my battery's going. Um, I am, I'm stoked. Uh, I know how amazing you guys are. We've been very blessed to have amazing artists each and every month. And, um, I, t I took a month to ask you this because, because I'm such a huge fan. Um, I was, I wasn't sure <laughs> how to ask you this. Um, but I'm just very, very happy that you chose to, uh, perform for us. So, so people, you'll see the amazing Mr. Chris Taylor, um, live next week friday friday april the 30th the last friday on the royals in concert um this rocker is gonna have you rocking trust me you gotta love well, his stuff soft and, rocking but but rocking yeah, nonetheless yeah, but rocking nonetheless <laughs> and um i uh, and, the, and there's a there's a there's an element to his performance that is absolutely unique that's going to just blow you guys away i'm not even going to talk about it um just just remarkable remarkable talent Thank you. And, um, Thank you. and uh, yourself and Adira and other, the other artists have keep saying um, you are, meaning me. It's not, I'm not the person who's doing it. It's we as artists. Um, it's the people like the, the Marianne's and the Susie's and the people who are there in each and every single live who are sharing out the stream, Ace, Donna, all these people. Um, it's a collective. I mean, you know, the whole purpose of what I'm trying to tell people and what I've learned as an artist is no artist does this on their own. Oh, that's so, the truth. Uh, you know, so I'm just happy to have all you amazing people here with us, sharing your time and your talent. And I'm hoping that we can get you back to come and sit with us and talk to us about your journey as an artist and as an artist. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, the art, yeah, the don't wait another month. Me. Just ask me. I promise no I'll return problem. your phone no calls. Problem. I promise you. I, I, I am really stoked to have someone um, as remarkable as yourself. And by the way, people, um, as mature and as um, intelligent as Chris is, he's a bit of a nut, just like myself and Nadira. You know, we're all a little crazy. <laughs> It's the art. It's it's a thing with the artists, people. We are all a little nuts, and when it's a good crazy, it's you a good. You know what? Crazy. There's there there is nothing <laughs> better in life than laughter, than like genuine laughter. Um, you know, Nadira and I got a chance to work on a few songs. We have a couple projects out and about. We're working on something else, you know, soon. And uh, so we both love to laugh. I got a chance to spend some time with her uh, in L.A. recently. And it's she's as genuine as a person as you, you would think she'd be from this from this interview. Um, and I think. Yeah, I think we all do have some screws loose, but they're the kind of screws Good that screws. I want. I don't want those tightened. I, I want yeah. them loose, you know? I agree with you, man. I agree with you a thousand percent. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, all right, so guys, um, join us uh, next week, Friday, April 30th at 8 p.m. Jamaica time, 9 p.m. Eastern, or, or 6 p.m. Western, Western time, okay? <laughs> Forgive the calculation there, people. Um, we're going to be doing this um, again tonight on my um, my YouTube channel. Look out for it. Uh, hopefully, I can get Mr. Taylor and um, Nadira X back in. Hopefully, we'll try and figure out how we can do the Facebook Live because, you know, 
a lot of people are there waiting and we, we disappointed them. Uh, but um, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing this again next week, Saturday. We have um, two more amazing persons lined up to be interviewed to tell you about the truth about the industry. Hopefully we can get Mr. Taylor to come back in and give you his, you know, his two cents um, on the industry. But uh, this is going to be a series now. It's called Entertainment, Truth, News, and You. And if you know anyone who is in the business who want to learn about the industry, how it really works, um, send them over to us. Uh, uh, they can watch this. They can watch the lives, or they can be here live. So be here next week. Again, that's the day after the Royals in concert. Uh, I am so stoked about that, people. Uh, huge fan of both of these artists, um, Summer and Chris Taylor. Just... People, my happy, my happy, my happy. <laughs> I tell you, um, I'm, I'm so happy to be able to bring together all these remarkable individuals. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we're just stoked. Oh, people, we have, we have, we have royalty. The TR show just joined us. That's my brother from another mother. Big up. And we have, we have so many beautiful people in the stream, though. Um, Susie, Marianne, the great Nadira X, Hawthorne just joined. Big up yourself. Straight Double H just joined. Big up yourself. Um, so uh, we're going to be doing this a little later on. I think at about 6 p.m. Jamaica time, which is 7 p.m. Um, Eastern and 4 p.m. Western. We're going to be doing this again. I keep trying to calculate because I don't remember. You're if it's better two than hours I am. Three hours, right? Better at that than I am. Uh, for we're sure. going to be doing this again. And we're going to try and do this hopefully again tomorrow on Facebook. We just have to figure out uh, how to get this done. People were trying to do this and we could not bring up the guests on Facebook. I don't know what that was about. Maybe we have to use a PC to do it, um, but we'll get it done tomorrow. Hopefully I can talk these two beautiful human beings to come back on air. Yeah, I'm going to get back to spray painting my walls. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, you I know what? Paint, I even paint the spray paint. That's so cool. <laughs> this this is what I'm saying, people. This is how remarkable these people are. And um, we are humbled to have you, bro. We are, we are humbled. We are humbled, humbled to have you. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. Oh, I have to say two more things really quickly. Um, one, we have two new sponsors for the show. We have McCoy News, who just came on board uh, out of uh, Montego Bay, Jamaica. Big up McCoy News. Antonia, big up yourself. Thank you so very much for the support. And we also have um, the Sam Brown Joint um, representing the North Manchester FM station out of Manchester, England. Thank you so very much. Uh, we have to big up for the show. These are sponsors for the Rising Concert. Mr. Clinton Lindsay, Foundation Radio Network, Blacklight Records. We have to also big up Just Right and um, Hype TV. Um, we're just stoked. And thank you to all these people who have come on board. It are go nice, it are go nice, it are go nice, people. Trust me, it only gonna, it's only going to get better. And this is now a series we're going to be doing live, the Ent Entertainment Truth News. And you, anyone you know who are, who's in the industry who wants to learn the truth about the industry, young or more mature, I refuse to use the word old, old is in your head. All of these people, you are welcome, you're welcome. Come watch the lives. You're going to learn a lot about the truth of the industry, all right? We love the world out and a big up all the people who stopped by, stayed with us. Um, remember, you are all kings and queens. I know that this pandemic has made us, a lot of us act in fear, but remember, fear creates panic. Panic leads to bad decisions. You are kings and queens. Let us come together, unite. Uh, there are forces in the world who try to do the reverse, but I know that there is nothing more powerful than you all who are beautiful human beings, kings and queens, and there is nothing greater than the power of love. I love the world I know. This is Peter Light signing out. Thank you to Nadira X who graced us uh, with her presence and to the amazing king himself, Mr. Chris Taylor, who I got shot next week, um, <laughs> Friday. The man, the man, I got bust up the place. Chris Knight, when we talk the street, Patwa, and I love the Patwa. So, I'm going to bust up the place. So, um, we have two amazing artists lined up for you next week. One more thing, last thing. Starting on the 1st of May, we're going to be doing a segment. We're going to be doing an online competition for younger talent. 
the winner, the, 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 the person who wins gets to perform on the, uh, the Royals in concert. You're going to have to submit a one-minute tape of yourself DJing, singing. I don't care if you have a guitar, band. It doesn't matter. A cappella. Submit. It cannot be longer than a minute or we won't be, we won't be watching it. One minute, submit it. You can either submit it to teampeterlloyd at gmail.com. We'll put the, the information down um, a little further down. So I'm excited about that to expose all that young, fresh, amazing talent. We're out there. Yes. Yes. And big up to all of you. I love you guys. Big up and bless up. We will see each other. Um, if you, you can check us out later on YouTube and tomorrow on Facebook, we're going to be doing this correctly. And of course, people, remember the Royals in concert. All right. That's Friday, April 30 at 8 p.m. Jamaica time, 9 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. Western time. Come by. We have two amazing artists out of Spain via St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, summer, and out of San Antonio, Texas, the one and only Mr. Chris Taylor, who is right here with us. Big up and bless up. And we have two amazing guest hosts. We have Tease Loco who's a well-known um, uh, online celebrity, remarkable person, and a close friend. And we also have Mr. The one and only Chef Noel Cunningham, a culinary genius out of Toronto, Canada. So it could have a nice, they got nice, they got a nice people. Wake them up, wake them up. Can't you see that we're sleeping? Big up to all of you, Chris. Big up, my boss. Love Thank you, Olano. you so much. You kings and queens. All right. I'm going to say, oh, 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 end this. I'm going to end the live, people. What am I do? All right. Nobody laugh out for me, no, 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 laugh, no, 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 okay, I think I have to, I have to click this thing, okay, guys, bye.